It's the next part of the Star Wars droid. This build's been quite experimental. It does kind of work, but there's quite a lot of interesting stuff that's come out of it. We'll talk about at the end. This project is based on some Star Wars droids, which Disney Imagineering have had walking around Galaxy's Edge theme park. Obviously, they far more resources than me, and they train the robots in a simulation before building them for a few months. Uh, yeah, I built mine in a few weeks. In the previous video, I built a very simple pair of legs with only four motors. The droid could bend each leg, but that was it, so it's a bit like tipping a box onto its edges. Just making the legs longer and shorter in turn was enough to tip the robot from side to side, but running it on fixed timers caused it to build up momentum and tip over. I used an inertial measurement unit to measure the angle and just regulate the step timing, which made it work consistently. It did walk along a little bit, but then disaster struck and it fell off the table. But we need to rebuild the hips anyway and add the extra joints, which we're going to do in this video. So now I'm going to add the hip joints that allow the legs to pivot sideways, and also some more joints to allow the legs to rotate on a vertical axis so the droid can turn. Oh, and I'm going to add the head as well. There are quite a lot of parts that need to be made to make the new joints for this, as well as the new body and a new head, and I'm also modifying some parts like the feet which are printing here. Here's some TPU which is going to be the individual edge essentially that each foot walks on, so it's got no ankle joints just as before, and we've got various other servo brackets and those other intermediate sections to make the other joints. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. It makes it much easier to get these projects done in time when I've got so many printers to print on at once. Yep, there was quite a lot to build for this one, this is some of the parts but not actually all of them, and yeah, you can see the head sitting there. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, you can now get 10% off at 3dfuel.com with my special code and link, and I'll get a small commission. The original situation was that I had these TPU strips, which were the edges that the feet walked on, and basically I had lots of holes so I could relocate them to put them in the right place, but now I'm just going to rebuild the feet so they're in a fixed position. So that involves putting on new pointy feet without the big flat bases, which aren't for anything, and putting the TPU strips on. So it's still walking on edges, but basically the feet have just been restyled to make it clear that it is. The original hip smashed when it fell off the table, so yeah, we need to get rid of them anyway so we can put the additional joints in. So we're just going to unbolt the legs basically, throw those hips away and rebuild all of the new parts to make those new intermediate joints. So I've got these parts here which you'll notice have some gears on them and they also have a metal stub which is the centre of rotation for that gear. On the other side of that we're going to have a mount for a servo for one of the axes and that also has another metal stub which is the other end of that axis. So that means that we can put the servo in and then that whole thing will rotate on that gear. And that assembly fits in place of the hips we just took off on the top of the legs. So now we've got the same assembly as before with those two parallelograms. So we've only got two servos per leg instead of three for the ankle, hip and knee. So just pop that back in. But now we've additionally got where these stainless steel studs are, the ability to lean sideways. And we've got that gear on the back there which is going to make a two to one reducer. We also want to be able to turn the legs in this axis, so we've got a couple more stages to build to separate those two legs out from when the hips were rigid. As before, I'm using these Dynamics or servos, which were given to me by Robotis, who manufacture them. I've only got eight of these, and that's why I still don't have that additional ankle joint. This is the part that's going to rotate the legs in their vertical axis, and that's using one servo. In each of those is another servo, which is going to have a gear on, and that is going to bind on that previous mechanism to tilt the legs sideways. So it fits roughly like this. Obviously, we need to put a plate on the back to support that metal stud. So with a bearing and a plate fitted, we've now got that sideways motion for those legs. And there's that gear buried inside the mechanism, so you can see that's turning, and there's hardly any backlash there. It's really very well tolerant, so we don't get too much wobble. So altogether, those legs move sideways now, and they also rotate against each other. And that's going to give us all of the joints we need in the hips and the legs so that we can walk and turn. But we need a piece in the middle, basically, with another servo, which is going to turn those two big gears, and it's just one servo, because I need the additional eight servo for the head. Here is that mechanism assembled. You'll notice one of those big orange gears is shorter than the other, so that the servo gear only binds on the taller one. So there's the whole assembly together. So you can see those gears turning the legs vertically, and also those other gears turning the whole thing sideways, with one servo in each side. So we've currently got seven servos in there. We need a place to mount the head servo, but first of all, I'm going to put some body panels on because everything is supported like a box structure. So let's screw those on. 
There is a head for this which goes about here and there is a mechanism that controls it that's going to sit in the top here but for now I want to turn this upside down and put it on this flat surface so I can sort out the rest of the mass for the inverse kinematics for those extra joints that we've installed. Last time we calculated the inverse kinematics for the robot by dividing the leg up into a triangle so that we could put in the leg length and then basically it would work out the joint angles. We also worked out how to move the foot backwards and forwards by making another right angle triangle, now we have that leg length and just working out with trigonometry essentially which was all put into the code so that we can position that foot in two axes up and down and forward and backwards and then we could work out the joint angles and we could move that foot backwards in a perfectly straight line as it walks. But now we need the additional axis to move those legs sideways so this in fact isn't the robot it's one of my robot dogs and that's because the maths and the calculation is exactly the same where we basically do another triangle that we work out to move that whole thing sideways in the translation axis and then basically we can pass that length on to the previous code. Before we see what that does, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PV Case. Now, PV Case is a next-generation AutoCAD-based piece of PV software focused on automation and accuracy. It allows you to simulate the actual location of a solar plant from the earliest stages of planning, incorporating 3D topographical data points. So PV Case is the ideal choice for companies undertaking large commercial and industrial projects, as well as utility-scale plants. The software really is intuitive and has streamlined processes to help reduce the learning curve and improve productivity. Features include everything from the prototyping stage, electrical design, stringing, shading and terrain analysis, and automatic generation of construction documentation. So PB Case really does enable engineers and designers to take the project all the way through from its initial conception to the procurement phase. This really is an end-to-end -end approach which saves time and reduces errors. It's streamlined so you don't need to switch between tools or other software platforms. Other features include slope analysis, piling and collision analysis, automated topographical 3D cabling, side-by-side -side design comparison and rapid 3D building preparation. Try PV Case for free by following the link in the video description. Right, let's see what these extra inverse kinematic stages do to this droid. So in the last video we already had the inverse kinematic sorted to go up and down in a straight line which is pretty easy and also to move forward and backwards in a straight line as well. So that sorts out all these leg angles based on wanting to move the feet basically backwards and forwards. And those mix together as well so I can go up and go forwards and backwards in a directly straight line until the servos reach their end stops or at least the mechanics of the robot do. So now additionally I've got the other axis to go directly sideways this way. So now I can move this completely sideways and it should go in a straight line, so that works. This mechanism is quite sloppy so it does tend to fall over a bit because of all of the backlash and all of the servos built up and some of my other mechanical linkages aren't quite that good. But there we go and we've also got rotation as well. We should be rotating around the centre point between the two hips. So that works but again it will fall over slightly as well. But we've got that rotation and all of those mixed together so now we can use that to make it walk. It will also just about walk as it did before, if I'm very careful. And this isn't using the new joints, Way, It's just using the original plan, which was to shorten and lengthen each leg in turn and tip like tipping a box onto the corners. And that's all it's really doing. And I can make it take tiny steps if I'm very careful indeed. And it will actually walk. But we really want it to go and sort of move its hips sideways rather than just kind of tipping like this because it's really tipping and we've still got to put the head on so we've got to be really careful with this in fact I'm going to switch it off before it falls on the floor again which is what happened last time so let's get the head on and then we'll see what we do next so we now have an additional servo fitted to the top here with a bearing in front of it and that's going to make a four bar link so that we can put the head on. I really don't have any more servos. I was going to put some extra axes on the head, but for now that's all we really need to throw mass forwards and backwards. So, of course, we can move the other joints as well with the kinematics, so we can do some minor puppeteering stuff, but really we're just trying to make this walk, so I don't care too much. Running the same code as before, without using those hip joints, we can get it to shuffle forward, but it's really quite shuffly. So we need to introduce the other joints. So now we're doing the same thing, varying the leg timing with that angle from the inertial measurement unit, but I've just introduced some hip sway that's synced up there as well, which is making it wiggle its bum basically. So um, it's definitely taking its feet off the ground and it's less shuffly, so I'm quite happy with that. You'll notice there's a bit of a squeak that's occurred, 
which um, is actually some plastic rubbing together in those gears in those sideways hip axis which need a bit of lubrication. The squeak was between the gears on that side to side axis. So I've just put some silicon lube in and now that's gone, so that's good. What we're finding though is it's still shuffling quite a bit and that's because we're only using dynamic leg timing to try and get it to the angle it should and just basically making it take longer if it goes um, away from an angle and there's not really any proper controller in there. So what I'm going to do now is try and use a PID controller to actually make it go to the angle I want based on the measured angle from the inertial measurement unit. So it should actually hit that angle, whether it's 10 or 15 degrees each side, as I want it to. And obviously if the inertia builds up or momentum builds up and it doesn't get there or it overshoots, then the PID controller should control these two new joints and that should try and make it match the correct angle. So now we have a demand angle, which is the blue line on the graph on the top left. And the red angle is the actual inertial measurement unit data, which is where the robot's actually getting to. So you can see the data is actually quite noisy. So as its feet stamp on the ground, there's quite a lot of vibration, which is a bit of a problem using inertial measurement unit data for the stability. So I'm not keen on that. I've got some other methods I'd like to use, which we'll discuss in a moment. But for now, that's looking like the best demo, basically. Its feet are definitely coming off the ground. Even if there is a little shuffle, it corrects because that controller moves the joints to the appropriate angle. We could really do with some front to back stability to try and take bigger steps. So what I've done now is tied the pitch angle, which is that front to back inertial measurement unit angle, to throw the head forward and backwards and move the legs so that it moves forward kinematically and backwards. So if I turn everything off and just turn off the motor enable, obviously it would fall over if I try and rock it. But if we turn it on, now it absorbs load. So this is quite... Um, a, a dirty hack really, let's face it, to give it some stability. So if we just transpose that over the top of walking, hopefully it gives us some interesting results. One thing I noticed is as it crouches down, then its head moves forward, which means that there's something mechanically wrong that means those legs are changing angle as it changes height. Um, it feels alive though really, like a proper kind of like creature if you push it around. As I pointed out before though, the inertial measurement unit data is really noisy as its feet stamp on the ground and that is the case for the other axis as well. So I had to heavily filter that data because otherwise it vibrates all over the place and does really weird things. So actually the inertial measurement unit is not a great thing to provide immediate stability with. So there's not much of the effect being seen here. You can see the head bobbing a little bit, which I guess is having some effect. It can walk backwards much better than it can walk forwards. But, you know, I'm not too unhappy with this for two weeks' work, really. Um, it can walk in all directions and turn, so I guess that's okay. I think what I'd rather do instead of inertial measurement unit data to do stability would just be some switches on the feet. So as it puts its foot down, it starts to put the foot down, and when it hits the ground, if it takes too long, that means it's leaning over that way because it would take longer, and the same in the other direction. So we could work out the side-to-side -side angle just by that foot timing, and then the same with heel to toe, just switches. If the toe hits the foot, the ground before the heel, then basically, then it's toe heavy and that'll be really easy to work out just without even analog pressure sensors, just switches and timing. So here we go with the most interesting discovery of this. What I've noticed, of course, and I pointed this out in the last video is that the table's quite wobbly and it's actually vibrating quite a lot as the feet are stamping on the table. I was gonna try and do a really good demo with the tabletop on the floor, but I couldn't get it to work at all. It occasionally takes a couple of steps, but it's really, really bad and it falls over all over the place. And what I've come to realize is that in fact, it only works on the wobbly table and it won't work on any solid surfaces. So I think this is probably the best demo that we had before we mixed in that front to back stability. It's taking proper steps and it can walk in all directions. Um, and the reason it seems to work the best is, as you can see, I'm slightly leaning on the table, but the table's still wobbling, which means that we've got some load being absorbed by the table, but it's being damped by my arms resting on it. So this robot's got rather tall. It's about 75 centimeters or 29 and a half inches, which means it's actually quite big. If we compare that to Open Dog 3, um, the legs aren't quite as long, but it is quite tall and it's got quite a lot of mass in it now. And the main thing about Open Dog, which worked really well, as well as having, you know, four legs, is that it actually had these back drivable joints that could absorb load. But the servos in the Star Wars droid aren't really back drivable at all. I previously made these cycloidal drives at Open Dog, which were 10 to 1 reductions, and that meant we could tune the motor driver to absorb load how we wanted and damp the response.
Of course on the other end of those 10 to 1 reductions were some big brushless motors controlled with O drives with encoders on the motors so we could make a tuned spring response and damp it how we wanted. So guess what's in these droids joints? Look at those big round ankles they've got. I expect they're probably brushless motors with a low reduction and um, a very similar setup to what I had in Open Dog and what's in MIT Cheetah and all the robot dogs really so they can absorb load. You can almost see the spring in their step. Here's a great little bipedal robot called Bruce from Westwood Robotics and yeah look at those brushless motors, probably low reduction, able to smash its feet into the ground and absorb load. You should check out the website for this, it's basically an open platform, you could build one of these um, for apparently $15,000, so there we go. So I've already basically been through this R&D, here's my cyclodal drive demo unit with a clear top that I take to shows sometimes. There's 12 of those in Open Dog version 3, and I already went through Open Dog 1 with rigid not back drivable joints, Open Dog 2 with belt drive joints, and onto that 10 to 1 on Open Dog 3, and we had some quite satisfying results in the end. So this would need a complete rebuild to work really. We need some smaller joints really than this, because this thing's massive and it's got quite a lot of mass to it as well. But basically, as robots got bigger, this has got a lot bigger and heavier than I thought it would. As robots get bigger, they have different issues, because that's physics. But in any case, I'm going to publish all of this as open source on my GitHub, as I always do, and those are solid models as well for the CAD. So if you want to take any parts of it, and you can put those into CAD and cut them up as if you drew it, or if you want to look at my inverse kinematics code or anything like that, all of that stuff is free and open source. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then patrons and YouTube channel members get access to all the videos up to a week early, and also they get an ad-free version with most of the ads stripped out as well. So check that out. Alright, that's all for now.